This may be the best mesh system that you can buy on the market, bar none. I mean, this thing can do everything, including VLANs, and it doesn't break the bank. Check this out. Hey guys, welcome to Ethernet Blueprint. My name's Tim Tritch. Now today's video is gonna be a little different. It's actually going against the grain of what I'm usually yapping about on this channel. I got to thinking, right? My message is very clear. If you're building a home, make sure you pull the wires. And we're gonna talk a lot more about that on this channel, but I got me thinking about what about the other guy? What about the people who don't have cables in their home and they want a great network, right? You could pay to retrofit cables in your house, or you could buy something like the product we're gonna talk about today and get all the benefits of a Ubiquiti system without the wires, so check this out. So before we get to the big reveal, I wanna just cover a couple things that I look for in a mesh system, right? What are we comparing this to? What, what boxes are getting checked off by purchasing something like this versus just going down to the local store and picking up something off the shelf, right? So um, when I buy a mesh system or when I'm looking at a mesh system, one of the big ones I'm looking at is speed. Speed's the big one, right? We want our devices to be fast. Now this is Wi-Fi 6, which is gonna help you in that speed category, but the biggie for me is that it is a tri-band system. I, I don't know that I would ever recommend a mesh system that is not tri-band. Um, I like having those dedicated five gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz channels, but then also having a dedicated five gigahertz backhaul to allow all your devices to communicate with each other or the nodes to talk to each other on this dedicated channel. I just think from a speed standpoint, that just, you know, really makes things run faster. The next thing is range. We, when it comes to mesh, range is a big one. And so, um, and I'll get into this a little bit later, but I ran my entire house off of two of these and one was in my basement and one was on my second floor. I did not have anything on my main floor and I got good speeds and coverage just about anywhere. So, you know, we wanna make sure it's checking off that box. The next thing is important to me. Um, I don't know if it'll be as important to you guys, but maybe this is the IT guy coming out of me, but I like alerting and monitoring. I like to know what's going on in my network or at least be able to go dive into the system and try and get some answers, right? Why did it do this? Um, you know, how, what's my bandwidth doing? You know, am I maxing things out? I like the pretty graphs and the things that help you troubleshoot something going on. And I like to get alerts when my internet goes down, if a rogue device connects to my network, things like that. To me, it just gives me that warm and cozy feeling that you kind of know what's going on in your network. Um, the next thing is security. So one of the big attractive features that, you know, the big boys uh, use, like Ubiquities that we talk about a lot on this channel, is being able to do some advanced security features like VLANs, DPI packet inspection, you know, filtering of your traffic in some way, creating rules that allow things to communicate or not communicate. And I'm happy to say that this system does it. This is one of the things specifically that makes this system stand out over really a lot of the other mesh systems out on the market. And the last thing isn't as big a deal, but it is some features, right? You want some maybe little perks to be able to own the device and, and um, you know, some little things that you can tweak or set up. And this is gonna come with some features as well, which, you know, like it or don't like it, but that's one thing that I do look at when I'm looking at a mesh system. So what is this mystery device that we're talking about? And actually it's been around for a little while. This is not a new player on the market, but I've looked at a lot of systems out there and I still just keep coming back to this guy because I think it stands out above the rest. It is the WRX560 mesh system from Synology. All right, so before we get into the interface of this thing, which is really the magical part, I wanna just quickly go over some of the specs so you guys have them. It's, this is not a spec video, so we're not gonna to take too deep a dive in here. But this is the system we're talking about. It's the WRX560. You can find it under the products area in Synology. Um, it really does pack a punch. We're talking Wi-Fi 6. The mesh support is absolutely awesome. Um, there's some safety features that we're going to talk about. So parents, I'm talking to you guys. If you want to be able to restrict some stuff for your kids, guys, this has it all built in, which is really nice. And then for my speed nuts out there who pay for extra speed, and they need more than a gig pumped into their home on the internet. 
This thing has you covered there too with a 2.5 gigabit WAN LAN port, so you can actually take advantage of those faster speeds. It's been featured in PC editors, which is great. Um, it really is designed as a mesh system, but it can be physically hardlined, which I think is great too. There is another version of it. This one over here is the AX6600. Um, it's a little bit more expensive, but you could mix and match, right? If you get one or the other. Um, and if you want to dive into that one, you sure can. I really think you get the most bang for your buck out of the 560 though. All right, mesh system. Um, it's going to take advantage of the 5.9 gigahertz band. So basically in your five gigahertz spectrum, they've expanded that a little bit to take advantage of this newer five gigahertz, 5.9 gigahertz band, which is going to be less crowded and hopefully make your, your network less susceptible to interference, which when we're talking about Wi-Fi guys, interference is the enemy. We really don't want that to happen. Um, lots of built-in features. It is built on the Synology router SRM. So Synology was actually kind of known for their NAS systems, which we're going to do some videos on that down the road too. I do have one of their Synology NASs and we're going to talk about, is that something that you should have in your home and why? So we'll, we'll dive into that. But the interface that we're going to be looking at is a spinoff of their Synology NAS, which is really awesome. They did a great job with it. Uh, there's a lot of cool features, some limit time for the kids we're going to get into, some web filtering, just all sorts of stuff. And there is a mobile app to be able to manage this thing on the go, remote access, all those things I was kind of talking about in the feature set that I look for in a router. So let's go ahead just and uh, get into the interface of this thing. All right, so this isn't really meant to be a deep dive video, but I, I have this set up and, has been, and have been playing with this. Uh, for a couple days. So I wanted to show you guys the interface, some of the some of the capabilities that it can do so you guys can kind of see that. But we're not going to take a deep dive in how to do this. I am going to do a series on this router just so you know on how to program VLANs, how to set up some of the security features. So if you are interested in what you're seeing here, guys, make sure you like or subscribe because we are going to be talking more about this system. I'm going to do a speed test between the mesh units so you guys can see what that looks like. We're going to really take a little deeper dive. This is just scratching the surface and showing you around a little bit. Um, now, one of the things that you may notice right away is this interface for the router system looks very much different than maybe a typical router system. Um, <clears throat> and that is because it is a spinoff of the Synology SRM that they use in their NASs. It looks very, very similar um, to their other inter to their interface they use in that system. So um, we're going to just kind of dive into each one of these very, very briefly. I'm not going to read everything to you on the screen, but we are going to talk about some of the key things that I talk about when I look for in a router system in here. So you can see we have network center, Wi-Fi. This is where our Wi-Fi is done. Safe access, guys, parents, this is that part's for you. The control panel, which is more, you know, navigating the actual system hardware. And then we have the security visor, which we'll touch base on too. So real quick, I'm going to start over in the control panel. And when you open up, this is really just how you interface with the router itself. You turn on features. This is how you update things. But the big thing I want to point out in here is your notifications, right? So once you get your email or SMS system, set up, whatever, uh, push notifications, which works really, really well. You guys can come in here and tweak how you want to be notified. And now a lot of systems don't really allow this. You either turn on notifications or you don't. Um, maybe there's a couple that you can tweak, like when a new device connects to the network or something like that. But this one gives you a lot of versatility as to what you want to be alerted on. You know, when there's updates, um, these things will tell you when the internet goes down, uh, if there's an error, too many IP addresses, something got blocked, malware, just all that stuff. So I encourage you, if you like the notifications part like I do, to look through here and, and take a and set it up the way you want to. It's a great aspect of this router system. Um, just got the regular serials information. And then under system, this is where you would update your, um, <clears throat> update your system, uh, update the database. So we have some security databases that are built in. So this is where you'd update those. Now, one thing I'll talk about is there, you, do, you can sign up and tie this thing to a Synology account. I recommend doing that. It's 100% free, it doesn't cost anything, but it allows you to kind of set up some of the remote features that come built into the system and allow you to take advantage of a lot of those. So I would recommend doing that. It's up to you. It's a, it, is vol it is voluntary. The app and the local interface will still work even if you don't do that. So um, really, really nice features from the router itself. 
The next thing we'll talk about is the network center. So this is where you would go to look at what's going on in your network, where you'd create VLANs, where you would create some of the security features, not the safe access, but just specifically like VLAN stuff, right? Port forwarding, things like that. Those are rules you set up on your network. This is where you do that at. So you have your quick status. You can see I got a couple networks there. We have our internet uh, settings. Now this does have smart WAN, so you can actually do dual WAN on this. So if you have a second internet or you wanna get a second internet connection, this actually can be set up to fail over to that second internet connection, which is super awesome. In a mesh system, that just doesn't happen. <clears throat> then you got your quick connect DNS, which I have to blur mine out so you guys can't see. Uh, but again, these are all things that allow you to access your device. Um, gamers, guys, there's port forwarding built in. The port forwarding rules are very easy to set up, just like in a typical router. Um, now, the local network, this is where you create your VLANs. This is where you go and tag ports on the, on the actual switch on the router itself right here. Um, or, you know, apply VLAN rules and things like that. So, uh, not VLAN rules. This is where you just go create the networks, which is really kind of cool. Um, set up your DHCP scopes and all that good stuff. Um, traffic control, right? So this is the um, some kind of like the monitoring we were talking about, right? So I can see what's going on on my network. I'm gonna move this over just a little bit, but you can kind of see what's going on in your network and then you can sort it, right? So you can look at, you know, what applications are, are, are happening, which domains are things going to. You can look at a specific device and, and look at that kind of traffic. So that's kind of neat. Uh, and there's some reporting built in as well. So I think that's uh, also a really great feature. Um, this is also where you would name or control some of your equipment. So for example, if I wanted my laptop here to be banned from the internet, I can click this one button and it'll block the internet, which I'm not gonna do. You can also prioritize your traffic. So if you see this living room fire stick right here below this, I could prioritize that traffic to kind of help with the buffering. So if you live in an area where you have maybe slower internet capacity, you know, prioritizing some of these devices that you want to have a good online experience could help you have an overall better experience online. Right, okay, so security, this is the firewall stuff. And we're not gonna dive in there, but I do have some firewall rules set up in here. They're very easy to set up, it's fairly intuitive, but it does require you know, its own video to talk about it just because there's a, a, a few caveats and some things that are different. So if you're used to Ubiquity and you're looking at something like this, maybe Ubiquity made you mad, setting up the firewall rules is different in this system. They just do it a little bit different. Not wrong, not better, not worse, just different, right? Uh, but you can you can set all that up in here. And then the operation mode just puts it in router mode or AP mode. So if you wanna put these behind a different router system, you absolutely can. All right, so uh, the Wi-Fi Connect area, this is where it so, um, works solely on Wi-Fi. And as you can see, I got an error because I have this disconnected here and that's what it's telling me. Uh, but this is where you would set up all your Wi-Fi networks. You can add a, an additional Wi-Fi point. So if you start out with two and add a third, you'd come in here to add the third one. It's how you see your Wi-Fi clients. All that stuff is all Wi-Fi driven is in its own menu, which makes it very easy to find. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about before I get into safe access is this security advisor. So one thing I think that Synology has done really well is, is you know, you go in, you tweak your settings, and there's a lot in here, guys. This thing really packs a punch. So how do you know you have it set up right? So you can actually click into the security advisor and run a scan, and it will actually make recommendations for you, which I think is really nice. It helps the everyday Joe kind of get things, make sure he didn't miss a checkbox or something like that. So if you quickly go over into advanced, you can have it do the security baseline set up on home or personal use or work or business if you want a little bit more security, or you can customize this yourself. That's up to you. And you can have this thing run on a schedule, which is nice too. It's gonna continue checking to make sure things are going good. But basically over on the overview tab, you just go ahead and hit the scan button and it only takes a couple seconds here to run this, but it's gonna go out and scan the system and look for things on your network or on the on the device itself that you that need your attention, that you need to go and put some attention on. And if it finds something, which this didn't, I've run this scan multiple times, but if it finds something, it's very clickable. You click the thing, it takes you right to that menu and allows you to check the box, uncheck the box, tweak the setting, whatever you need to do. So I really do like this feature. I think it helps the everyday non-IT common person, um, you know, make sure their system is uh, secure and, and, and looking good, right? 
All right, let me take a sip of coffee for this one. The next thing is safe access. So parents, we're talking to you. Safe access is a, is a feature that's built into this router that allows you to set up rules or profiles to control what your kids or certain devices or certain networks, you can make a kid's VLAN and apply these rules to the entire VLAN, which I think is a, a nice way of doing it. Um, and and um, basically limit what they can get to or how much they can get to and whatnot. So let's take a look at it. So we're just gonna open, save and access. I'm gonna go ahead and move the screen over here so I can have my little picture in picture. All right, so basically what it does is it, 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 it tells you, it's, it's really built to keep your children or certain devices safe when they're online. Make sure you're you know, not getting to anything inappropriate. So what you do is you actually create these profiles and I've created a one real quick called a kid's profile just so I could play with it a little bit. And inside this kid's profile, you set up these rules, right? So I'm gonna e choose edit this and keep in mind, I haven't been in here a ton, so we might have to click around a little bit, but you can name it. You can assign devices to it, right? Um, which is kind of neat. This is a, there, when you set up a new profile, it actually says, do you want to do a, um, do you want to do a user profile or a network profile? So when you do a network profile, that'd be like applying it to a kid's VLAN. So the kids would connect to the kid's Wi-Fi network. And then this security profile would be attached to that entire network. So even if their friends came over and connected their devices to the kid's network, you have these rules in place that allow those devices to only do certain things. So lots of versatility here. But if you just had maybe a kid's tablet or something that you wanted to keep it tabs on, you can do it with just a uh, individual device or a couple devices. So if we go take a look at this real quick, um, we've named the profile, add some devices. You can add an internet s schedule so you can basically make their devices only able to get online certain times of the day. Now, time quotas kind of crazy. The only device I've seen out there that actually does time quotas was that Disney box that was real expensive and you kind of added it to your network. This actually allows you to set how many hours a day you want your kids to be online. That's a big one. You do not see this in a lot of devices. Um, one of the other security devices I review is the Fire Walla and it doesn't even have that built in. And people have asked for it and asked for it and they said it's tricky to do. So I haven't played with this. We'll, I'll try to play with it more when we talk about a video specifically on this thing and, and, and I'll test to see what works and what doesn't. But it's nice to know it's there. There's web filtering. So there's some built-in ones. Child really is for like younger children. So if you have teenagers, this might be a little too restricted. There's an employee because this is a business grade box and then there's a guest policy. So you can create a guest network apply the guest policy to the guest network and make sure that your babysitter isn't getting to anything they're not supposed to. And then you have a custom one. You can click on the custom deals and you can actually pick and choose what you want to block or not block, which I think is really, really nice too. Um, there's safe search. So you can actually restrict, you know, when they Google boobs, you know, try and find some funny pictures of boobs or something like that. You can restrict that. So it's only going to show like the JCPenney ads and things of that nature. And then this is a just a checkbox. I recommend by default leaving it checked. It basically just is something built in that allows them not to kind of beat the, the security standards, not to bypass them. So I highly recommend leaving that checked. Um, but you can, as you can see, there's all sorts of things you can do in here. Um, the web filters, again, you can come in here and adjust what you want. You can create custom ones, adjust the ones that are there. If you open it up, you can see what some of the things you can block in here. Really, really neat. Um, access requests. So if you give them more time, they can request more time in their quota. If they've used all their time and it's a weekend, you can do that. And then there actually is a block page that you can customize that says, no, no, no. Mom says you can't get there. So guys, this really is a neat little aspect of this router. And the fact you don't have to pay a service for it is, is, uh, really kind of crazy. Uh, there's some additional security features in here like threat detection, Google safe browsing. You can actually look at the activity so you can see what is being blocked and what isn't. Or this kind of helps for, oops, I blocked something I didn't mean to block. You can go in there and say, oh, yep, there it is. It's blocked by my web filter. So you can either uncheck that or tweak it the way you need to. Um, I did a test, you know, went to the big, the big, 
porn site, it blocked it right away. Um, and I've even played around with how to block certain things with apps like Snapchat. You know, we don't allow Snapchat in our house uh, with our with our kids just because I think it's more problem than it's worth. That's my opinion. But, um, you know, can you block Snapchat? Yes, you can. You can actually render it unusable. It's not really blocking it. It's rendering it unusable. So when they're flipping through things, it'll open and they might see a few videos, but then all of a sudden it just goes to hell really, really quick. So that is this safe access. Guys, from a parenting standpoint, I get asked a lot, how do I control this? How do I know what's going on? These kids were raised in technology, so they're better at it than we are. This really is a great tool, and we will take a deeper dive on that down the road. So as you can see, guys, this device really has a lot to offer, especially when you're comparing it to the mesh space. Now, in the world of the ubiquities and stuff like that, I still recommend hardwiring your home and you know putting in a nice system like the ubiquities of the world however you could look at something like this this can be hardwired as well um, they really do pack a lot of features into one device so i hope this helped you guys we're going to be taking a deeper dive into this as we go along and we'll see you guys in a future video